Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on S3. And as you may know, we are chatting maternity, paternity, and all the dynamics thereof. South Africa is a rainbow nation, and in every sense of that particular word. And in South Africa, the LGBTQ plus uh, community, of course, have the same rights as everybody else, which includes the rights to adopt and grow their family just like anyone else. But this brings the question up. How does maternity and paternity leave affect queer relationships and the adoption or surrogacy process as well? And here to unpack, we have Arthur Bishop. Arthur, welcome to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Thanks a lot for joining us this morning. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. So as you know, this, uh, we've been chatting about this all the way through the show, but I, I'd love to traverse this particular part of the topic. Now, firstly, when you and your partner decided to have children, was the thought overwhelming of, of how to go about it and how that would position itself within a society like the one we have today? Yes, for sure. It was definitely overwhelming, especially if, uh, if getting it from a, a perspective. We don't, you know, we never thought that there's actually this possibility of us being able to have children. Um, and when we started, when we got, got married and we had the conversation that, you know, we want to have some children, I didn't even know the word surrogacy. I thought it was a buzzword. Um, I didn't know what what it really entails, etc. And the one evening we just spoke about this whole um, idea and the whole reality of it. And when we started to talk about it, it was extremely overwhelming because you don't know where to start. You you don't know um, how to go about it. And and the, the fact that it was actually a possibility yeah. was extremely overwhelming. Yeah. So how did you go about with all of that, which would cause anybody to have a lot of apprehension around it? I mean, how did you approach adoption versus surrogacy? How did you come to that, that, that type of idea? And, and more importantly, yeah. how did you make that decision? Yeah, so I always, both of us, we wanted to have children all our lives. Um, and for me, adoption was always an option. Um, as we, as it was, when I was younger, I didn't think the possibility of having children was there. And then when the possibility approached, I was very keen for adoption. Um, and then my husband uh, then actually approached me and said, but listen, there's the surrogacy option as well. Yeah. And he did a lot of research about it. And when he hit that with me, I'm like, oh, my word, I didn't even know that that's an option. Where do we start? Um, and then when we spoke about it, you know, deep down inside, um, there is this desire to have your own biological children. Yeah. And surrogacy made that a possibility um, for something to explore. Um, so that's when um, both of us had the desire to have our own biological children. And I think that's where this, the choice really for us was made to go a surrogacy route. But that doesn't mean that there's not a possibility for adoption in the future. <laughs> Well, I, mean, that's, I, I love the fact that you kept that open because, you know, that's, that's such an important thing. There's so many kids in this world that require great people like you to be their, you know, their dads, which is wonderful. But was there a lot of guidance to the process? Because, I mean, I can only imagine surrogacy. There, there are a lot of movies you can watch. You, you think about those movies where the, the, the mom comes back to get the child because the, the, the mind has changed. You know, w weren't you scared in that moment? Was there a lot of guidance to keep you calm through the, the entire process? Yeah, originally it, it really felt like a big black hole because you yeah. had the idea, you knew what surrogacy was, you could look up a lot of videos, but guidance, there wasn't very much out there. If you go onto the internet, you didn't find, you know, I'm a chartered accountant, so I want a step-by-step -step process, and there is not a step-by-step -step process for a surrogacy process. Yeah. So when we got hold to, uh, we got in contact with uh, the fertility clinic, and they actually got us into contact with our fertility lawyer. And that's where the guidance started to really happen. Um, and so before that, we didn't have any guidance. So we really jumped into the pool um, without any wings. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, and then later after we met the, the, the lawyer, he was really helpful to, to, to tell us what the process are, what we need to do, when, and then the guidance was really there. I think anybody will tell you that parenthood is just jumping in and not knowing much, which is exactly what the, the process is like. But let's talk about what we've been chatting about on the show today is around paternity 
and your company acknowledging paternity leave, especially you and your husband within a relationship like that. Uh, do you feel that there was acknowledgement and ample equality with regard to the way they dealt with your paternity leave? Because sometimes maternity leave versus paternity leave, that is outscaled. Paternity leave is quite a duration, while as paternity leave, it seems to be quite a, a limited sort of time period. So what were your thoughts on, on, on that when you actually came to encounter that particular experience? Yeah, we um, luckily we're in the situation where um, we got one of us got got uh, the maternity leave part of of the whole process. Yeah. So uh, so there was a four month option, and the other one of us got the paternity leave, which is only ten days. Yes. Um, I, I still feel that there's a bit of a lack in our community currently that it shouldn't be maternity leave and paternity leave anymore. It should actually be leave for the primary caregiver and leave for the secondary. Uh, caregiver um, because that's how we really approached it and our firms also approached it that way so we we got a, a leave for the primary caregiver which was more in relation with maternity leave and then also the paternity leave part which is the 10 days um, leave that we got but I'm glad you mentioned that there does need to be some recourse in that particular area because there are a lot of things to do around expecting a baby and it's not just about yeah. carrying full term, but there are a lot of infrastructure things you have to do and you know, we do need to kind of adjust it. And I think conversations like these, Arthur, are gonna bring about that change, especially on this particular platform. But thank you so much for sharing and all the best to your family. I think you are phenomenal and I think that you and your husband, fantastic parents to be very, very fair. So do enjoy and thanks a lot for answering all the questions today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That was Arthur Bishop just chatting on queer relationships and how maternity versus paternity, our topic for the day, has been engaged within those particular communities. But of course, keep the conversation going and keep these conversations going in other places as well. We need more of it because the more conversation, the more change we can see in society.